What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. So the other day, legendary screenwriter and producer Norman Lear passed away at 101 years old, right? 101 years old, the man lived a fruitful life, a long life, and has accomplished a lot. One, he's won Emmys, etc. So for those who don't know, Norman Lear was credited for creating, writing. He was really not more than credited. He was revered, like praised to the highest degree for creating, writing, and producing classic television shows that were often regarded as groundbreaking, such as All in the Family, The Jefferson, Sanford and Son, Good Times, Different Strokes, etc., right? And one would think that, you know, well, outside of All in the Family, these shows star black people. They star black people. So you would think that once, you know, his passing came, that black people would be, you know, celebrating his life, They that we would all be admiring him, we would be honoring him, not honoring, but you know what I mean, celebrating his life and give him, giving him a lot of praise. However, Norman Lear's death has been met with a lot of vitriol from a lot, a lot of black people, a lot of people in the black community. And the reason for that is because Eric Monte, a black man from Chicago, Illinois, has come out publicly like in recent years talking about how Norman Lear was a racist, a hypocrite, a thief, and a liar, right? Now, all those adjectives uh, Eric Monte used to describe Norman Lear, you know, a lot of them stand out. All of them do, right? But one thing I looked at, I, I mean, looked at race as well, but the thief, the thief part of that. And I say that because Eric Monte was the one creating a lot of these shows, the vision, and, and creating the story behind a lot of, uh, all the majority of these shows that I named. Eric Monte was the one giving Norman, uh, Norman Lear the ideas to do these shows, what to name the characters, etc. Allegedly, that's what Eric Monte is, is alleging. Um, and this is really shocking because Norman Lear was he was celebrated. He was supposed to be this progressive guy with all his knowledge of the black community, and everybody heralded him as a man who was down with us. Right? He was a man who was down for the cause. We invited him to the fictitious uh, cookout. The, uh, the, excuse me, the fictitious cookout. We was all oh Norman Lear. Everybody in the black community. For years before Eric Monte came out with this uh, information, everybody praised them for, for producing these shows that were depicting complete black families like Good Times and black upper middle class people like the Jeffersons, something that a lot of people thought would never be portrayed in television. You know what I mean? And people looking at that like, oh, my God, Norman Lear is a guy with an eye, an eye for talent, and he knows how to display the black family and black people in general in the correct in the correct way on screen. Like I said before, he's won Emmys for these shows. Little did we know he was allegedly, and I'm going to use the word allegedly, you know, because um, I just want to make sure I throw that in there. He was allegedly stealing from black creators like Eric Monte. Eric Monte, a black creator like Eric Monte in in particular, right? And to me, when I, like, when I say Eric Monte's name and I think about his story, it really makes me cringe. It really gets me upset. Because when you hear this brother went through homelessness, he went through a path of addiction because of trying to battle Norman Lear and the right for him to be credited for his works. You know what I mean? Those who don't know Eric Monte, he was one of the creators and writers of Good Times back in back in the 70s. You know what I mean? Eric Monte alleges that um, Norman Lear, he never paid him properly for his work on the show and that Norman Lear wrongfully took credit for creating all of these shows that were based on characters or ideas that Eric Monte himself came up with just think about uh good times good times was set in the cabrini green housing projects the cabrini green housing project is where eric monte grew up that's where he's from in chicago the cabrini green for those who don't know big high-rise housing projects in my hometown of chicago the high housing projects are often 16 were often 16 stories big tall right and um we had several of them the robert taylors you had cabrini green uh, you had the Harold Ickes, etc., right? Ida B. Wells, all these different buildings. Eric Monte was from the Cabrini Grain, which was the setting for not only uh, Good Times, but also the Candyman films, right? Especially the one that came out, I believe, in the early 90s. Now, the one that came out recently, the uh, they had them set, you know, the row houses were featured in there because the buildings are no longer standing, but the row houses were featured in that, right? So, yeah, I'm thinking about this like, yo, the Cabrini Grain, like, this is something that, Eric Monte came up with, and I'm, I'm honestly, y'all, as I got older, 
I often wondered how this, how, like, when I first heard Eric Monte's story, right? And I, but I, not even before hearing, before hearing Eric Monte's story, I'm looking at Norman Lear, and I'm, you know, because I'm a media junkie, super media junkie. I've always been into who created these shows, who wrote this, who shot that. I've always been into that, right? And that's why I majored in communications when I went to school. But anyway, I always scratch my head wondering how did, how in the hell did a white Jewish man come up with these black shows and then he got everything right, like majority and majority everything right from the way black people interact with each other, from all the intricate details of how we talk, how things that we might say when we feel nervous, when we feel upset, how families might respond to certain black families respond to certain news of certain things. Things that we do in times of desperation, in times of need, in times of financial disparity, and uh, how we, you know, um, how black folks live together uh, amidst the projects, how, you know, all these different things that he knew and could put a finger on. And I'm like, how did a, a white dude, a white Jewish dude know all of these intricate details? It's not like Norman Lear grew up around black folks and grew up in the hood. He, If he did, I may think otherwise, but he did not. And I don't care how many, because people would say he could have went to college and met some black people. Listen, I can be a college kid and have a Jewish roommate. I know how my interactions are with him. I can't go and forth and, 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 cre and create a show based upon black people's interaction, or Jewish people's interactions with each other, how they talk, um, um, how they dress, how they, all of that. I'm not going to get all of that down just because I have one white Jewish roommate. So that so people can try to put that out there oh maybe he had a black roommate in college no i often was puzzled at how could he get these little details all correct it just was like yo i, I never seen that i don't care how down you can be with black folks unless you grew up like in a black household or, or like a really 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 not just adjacent right next door to him and you was in their house all the time a lot of times you're not gonna get these details now so it just scratch my head right and I, and I really hurt for Eric Monte because, like I said, he went through homelessness and all of that. But not even just that part. Just his 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 um, trail that he blazed. His road to, to success. This is a man who hitchhiked his way from Chicago to Hollywood to make his dream of telling black stories and creating black heroes on TV happen. Right? He said he would watch these all these different shows as a kid. And he liked them and he thought these shows um, were funny. But he didn't, he know they was not shows that black people, like, these were not all shows where black people would gravitate to, and they weren't his heroes because, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, like, you want to see your, everybody wants to see themselves represented on TV, everybody, and Eric Monte was no different. So he set out to Hollywood. In 1971, Mike Evans, who played Lionel Jefferson on All in the Family, right? And I'm getting a lot of this information from a YouTube channel by the name of Dara Star Tucker. Y'all go shout out her. Go look at her channel. Dara Star Tucker is the name of that channel. Dope sister broke this story down and, and great pieces, included sound bites of the uh, interview that Eric Monte did, calling out Norman Lear and all of those things. So y'all check out her story, right? And what she came up with, right? So anyway, in 1971, Mike Evans, who played Lionel Jefferson in All in the Family, on All in the Family, because the Jeffersons were not out yet. Um, Mike Evans, that played Lionel Jefferson, he asked Eric Monte if he would be able to write a script for the show that would help him flesh out his character a bit more. So Eric Monte did just that. And then Mike Evans asked Eric to write a show that centered on his character. Eric Monte uh, then created and wrote the Jeffersons. Y'all know George Jefferson, Wheezy, Louise, Jefferson, all of that, right? And um, Lionel Jefferson, their son. Um, after, you know, Eric, Eric Monte wrote and create, created and wrote the Jeffersons, Mike Evans put him, he put Mike Evans' name and Eric Monte's name on the project slash show. And then, and then Mike Evans took that show to Norman Lear, hoping that... Uh, Eric Monte and Mike Evans, they both hoped that they could split the money evenly. Once Mike Evans took it, took the show to Norman Lear, Norman Lear sent for Eric Monte. He sent for Eric Monte, and that's how the Jefferson show got started. He originally, he, meaning Eric Monte, he told, um, I'm excuse me, not he, he meaning Norman Lear. Norman Lear told Eric Monte that America would never buy a, a TV show where a black man uh, was calling white people the word honky. Because that is how George Jefferson described 
white folks, a hunky, a hunky, right? Which is a, <laughs> people call it a, ra which is a racial slur, right? Or, or a slur for white people during that time, right? And he like, yo, Norman Lear is telling Eric Monte, white people, white America, America would never buy this show. They would never buy it. And then he put a lot of Eric Monte's ideas on the Jefferson show, like a black man calling a white man honky, but he never invited Eric Monte to be a writer on the show. And he didn't even list him in the credits as a creator or offer any residuals for Eric Monte's works or Eric Monte having to develop these characters because Eric Monte is the one who developed these characters, right? Um, then Norman Lear came to Eric Monte about trying to remake a British TV show by the name called Steps, Steptoe and Son, right? Eric, uh, Norman Lear wanted to recreate this show. Eric... Eric Monte suggested that Norman do the show with an all-black cast and use Red Fox because Norman Lear had this idea about a man owning a junkyard. And he's like, yo, Norman, if you're going to make a man own a junkyard, use Red Fox. Uh, allegedly, Norman Lear had no idea who Red Fox was at all. He had no idea. And he insisted, no, 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 Eric. That's what Norman Lear is telling Eric Monte. This is a white show. This is a show for white people, right? Two months later, this is alleged, uh, uh, being alleged by Eric Monte, two months later, Norman, Norman Lear was doing Sanford and Son, and he had Red Fox starring on the show, right? He did all of that, but he never acknowledged Eric Monte's contribution on the show. He never acknowledged that Eric Monte was the one who suggested that he hire Red Fox and come up with the whole storyline. For the most part, came with the storyline and the relationship with the father and son and all of that. And he never acknowledged that, right? Um, then Eric Monte pitched... Norman Lear, the show for good times, based upon his upbringing in the, in the Cabrini Green housing project, as I said before. Uh, now, for good times, Eric Monte was finally hired to write for good times. He was hired by Norman Lear, but he says this whole time it was combative because he and other actors, John Amos, John Amos uh, in particular, they were in battles with, with the, uh, excuse me, with the white writers for the depictions of black people and racist stereotypes of our community. Right now, if you notice, not of course, JJ was always JJ. He was always flashy, flamboyant, dynamite. That was his thing, right? But it still was centered on. You had a, a, a son that was, uh, excuse me, JJ was still a, a, a beautiful, outstanding uh, painter. He was dope with paintings and, and, and drawings and all of that, right? But his main thing was painting. Then you had a uh, beautiful daughter. Um, um, uh, Thelma, oh, and I thought Thelma was so fine as a kid. She still looked good now as, a, as an older woman, right? Uh, then you have the black militant, um, Michael. All these dope characters headed in the household by a mother and father. Right now, I want to remind y'all that when the show first came out, Esther Rowe fought to have a husband. They wanted to make her a single mother in the projects. They didn't want to have a father. She fought for the depiction of the black family. You know what I mean? But then, as time went on, during the show, the show was a hit. But as the seasons went on, John Amos felt like the show was just too focused on dynamite all the time rather than, you know, the upliftment of the black family and everybody's pivotal role in the household. They wanted to focus on just getting laughs with J.J. just saying dynamite, which is why my grandmother, a woman who uh, my mother, grandmother died some year, a couple of years ago. Uh, she died at 86 years old, black woman that migrated to Chicago in 1960 from Mississippi, from rural Mississippi. Right. She did not like good times because she felt like it was too much shucking and jiving on JJ's part, which Norm, which uh, John Amos, who who played um um God, what was the daddy name? What's my what's my man the daddy name man on there? God, James Evans. Uh, John Amos, who played the dad, James Evans, he wanted to uh, calm, he wanted to cool that down, all of that dynamite. He felt like it was too much shucking and jiving. We want to focus on the other my other children, focus on the other children in the family. Norman Lear did not like that. He was pissed off that John Amos challenged him and fired John Amos from the show and then wrote in the show that he he was he basically killed him off after he went down south trying to get a job and died in a car crash, which made the show go down. I still watched the show and loved it, but come on, man. James Evans was a staple of that show, and it was a black family depiction. But how are you going to do that without the father? He But Norman Lear was just being upset and pissed that John Amos was challenging him in the right, right, right the, excuse me, the white writers because they thought they knew everything about black community. They, but they was focused on Eric Monte would describe it as describing black folks at that time as yes, a boss, yes, a boss and all that type of stuff. Right. And no, that ain't how you portray black people in the right way. But anyway, during Eric Monte's battles with Norman Lear and, and the white writers, um, he got demoted because of these battles, even though they were still using Eric Monte's ideas. And that those ideas of Eric Monte's became a big hit across the country on these TV shows. 
So Eric Monte still got demoted because he's battling, even though they still use his ideas, while the, the white writers were promoted in Eric Monte's place. So after the second season of Good Times, Eric Monte got a deal to write Cooley High. Cooley High. And he left Norman Lear's production company. And then ABC head Michael Eisner called in Eric Monte to create a show based on the pilot for uh based on the movie uh Cooley High. He wanted to make a show based on the movie Cooley High. Eric uh Michael Eisner. He called in Eric Monte to do that. That show became what's happening. Eric Monte wrote, wrote a pilot for the show and ABC accepted it. However, he fought for control due to how Norman Lear did him so dirty. He wanted to put out Eric Monte wanted to put out the show through his own production company. But ABC executives said he didn't have any producing experience, and so they hired line producers to, to work with him. They hired the line producers. But Eric Monte's agent, Bernie Weintraub, repped Saul Turtletop and Bernie Ornstein, and when he saw the production deal, when Eric Monte saw the production deal, it was listed under Toy Productions. Eric Monte, like, who the hell is Toy Productions, right? He was befuddled to find out that Toy Productions was Turtletop, Ornstein, and they have formed a, a company with Bud Yorkin, who was Norman Lear's partner, right? So at that point, ABC signed a deal to do the show with Toy Productions as the A and, and excuse me, with Toy Productions as um, as Eric Monte's own agent, Bernie Weintraub, negotiated that deal behind his back. Eric Monte then went to the Writers Guild to try to get them to mediate the whole situation, but they offered him bare minimum, which was a slap in the face for all the work that he had done. Eric Monte then filed, filed a lawsuit against ABC, CBS, and Turtle Top, Ornstein, Yorkin, Weintraub as well, his former agent, and also Norman Lear. He filed a suit against all those individuals trying to get the appropriate credit for the TV shows that he created, for the characters he created, and, sto and the stories he made. Norman Lear then came to Eric Monte and offered him a measly $1 million for a settlement. A little last $1 million for all of the shows and ideas that he created. So then Eric Monte said to Norman Lear, $1 million? For all of that, all the stuff I wrote, no way. No way I'm giving just getting $1 million for all the shows I contributed on and gave you ideas for. And then the lawyers came to Eric Monte, Eric Monte's own lawyers, and told him to take the money so they could get paid. They told Eric to take that settlement money or they were walking off the case. So Eric searched far and wide across Los Angeles with evidence to back up his claims, and no lawyers in L.A. took his case, probably because all the lawyers were in cahoots with, it, with each other. Now, all of this happened three days before the statute of limitations ran out on the oldest accusations on the lawsuit. So Eric was forced, Eric Monte was forced to take the settlement and he was then blackballed from the industry, right? Eric Monte later on, later on ended up homeless and developed an addiction to crack cocaine that I'm glad that the brother kicked. He kicked that addiction in the early 2000s. But what, it just pisses me off that these people robbed him of everything he worked hard for. And what hurt was that I, I was looking like, man, ain't no other black executives or anybody try to help him out you know what i mean but let's get back to the real uh criminals in this situation because alleged alleged criminals norman lear and again i always just found it funny how this white jewish man had all these ideas and knew about how we the slang we use and you know how we communicate with each other it was just strange you know what i mean but norman lear cheated eric monte allegedly eric uh, norman lear allegedly cheated eric monte out of creative credits in millions of dollars which I know hope that hurt that brother's soul and spirit and broke him and probably what led to his addiction to drugs because he felt hopelessness. You know, and a lot of black creators have been done like this over the time and have not been given credit for their work and had, ever, had everything snatched from underneath their feet. People stole their ideas and used them and took advantage of them because they had no idea about the, uh, the, the film industry, the, t the TV industry, none of that. And these uh, the executives, they knew about it. So they took advantage of these black minds like Eric Montes and just took took credit for everything while pushing Eric Monte the little crumbs while they got the big, big mega millions and, and got fat off of it. So that's disrespectful. And that's why black folks was not celebrating Norman Lear, because we all believe that he stole his stuff from Eric Monte for real.